Today's programme in our series, Choirs and Places Where They Sing, features the choir of Leeds Parish Church, with the organist and choir master Donald Hunt and assistant organist Donald Webster. The programme is introduced by John Betjeman. Trains draw into Leeds over arches. Out of dark red brick houses rise thin black spires, thick black towers, steep hills, square mills, factory chimneys, a memorable encumbered skyline, almost wholly 19th century, except for a few post-war slabs. Here, in the centre of the city, where the brown waters of the river air wind between handsome wharves, are little cobbled entries to courts off Brigitte and Kirkgate. They make one realise that Leeds is an old city. Near here is St John's Church, a complete building, inside and out, of 1634, very rare. Here is the graceful steeple of Georgian Holy Trinity Church. These are the first two of the many daughter churches of St Peter's, the famous parish church of Leeds, where we are now. Leeds is a place of strong personality. For centuries, it has been associated with the cloth trade. By tradition, it was royalist and old-fashioned high church. The parish church is a sort of cathedral. It rises in velvety black-grey local stone from two-storey red brick houses. These small houses give it scale and grandeur and it would be a pity to destroy them, as seems to be being done. There has been a church on the site of the present one since Norman times. What you're looking at now is an early Victorian rebuilding of a late medieval church. It's really Georgian Gothic, Gothic with a K. The architect was R. D. Chantrell, a Leeds man and a pupil of the great Sir John Soane. It is in a Gothic of Chantrell's invention, dark and romantic outside. We come in and see the contrast, black and white. Opposite the main north transept door, you see the huge black pinnacled organ case filling the whole south transept. Did you ever see so many pews and so many galleries and dark wooden pinnacles, black as bog oak against the white of sculptured walls? When you come to touch it, you find that a lot of this carved wood is really papier-mâché, painted dark, and that many of the supports are cast iron and that the carving is plaster. For this great church, is a work of the early Industrial Revolution, making full use of the latest materials of those times. Chantrell had to build it cheaply and large enough to seat 2,000. He had to give it dignity and make the altar the focus of attention and the pulpit the second focus. Superbly well he's done it. Leeds Parish Church has a spaciousness and grandeur which grows on you after the first gasp of amazement. From the tower crossing in the centre, behind you, there's the galleried nave. On your right, the pulpit commanding the galleries. And in front of you, that wide, rich chancel leading up to the apse with its gorgeous glass from the low countries, red and gold and blue. The chancel is a richer, ungalleried version of the nave. There is no screen between the choir and nave. East of the choir is a grand ceremonial space leading to the altar. And for centuries it has been the custom in Leeds Parish Church for communicants to come up into this space at the point of the communion service where the priest says, draw near with faith. John Wesley assisted in giving the sacrament to over a thousand people here in 1781, as he had done 40 years before. There's been a surplus choir here, here since 1818. In 1837, Dr. Hook became vicar. 
And he it was that rebuilt the church as you see it today. I will have a good service, even if I go to prison for it, he said to have said. Since 1841, there have been daily services sung by a large choir of boys and men. Samuel Sebastian Wesley, the most famous church musician of the middle of the last century, was first organist of Hook's rebuilt church. Hook set an example to the rest of the parish churches of England in the matter of daily choral services. There's a saying in Leeds, High Church, Low Church and Leeds Parish Church. It's certainly a unique place, loved, polished and worn with worship. The stained glass in it of the 1840s is the finest I know in the country of that date. One window particularly stays in mind. It's called the Penny Window, full of bright little pieces of orange, amber, gold and purple glass with the inscription, To the Parish Church on its re-consecration from the poorer members, 1841. Naturally, Hook was a friend and champion of Richard Osler, the factory king, who helped to bring about the act which stopped little children from being employed and maltreated in factories. His motto was, the altar, the throne and the cottage. And now let's hear some of Wesley's music. We begin with the jubilati from his service in E major.
Next, Donald Hunt plays us an organ piece by Samuel Sebastian Wesley. His introduction and fugue in C sharp minor.
Sir Edward Bairstow was organist here in the early days of this century before moving to York Minster in 1913. He was one of the most successful choir trainers of his time. We now hear his anthem, Blessed City.
One of Bairstow's pupils at Leeds was Sir Ernest Bullock, whose anthem, Give Us the Wings of Faith, we hear now. Now two more recent pieces, both written for Leeds Triennial Festival. This organ piece, Festal Toccata by James Brown, was written in 1961.
to end this program from Leeds Parish Church, we hear the jubilati from the music which Francis Jackson wrote for the opening service of the 1964 festival. It is dedicated to Donald Hunt. was the tenth in our series of eleven programmes, choirs and places where they sing. Today you heard the choir of Leeds Parish Church, with the organist and choir master Donald Hunt and assistant organist Donald Webster. The programme was introduced by John Betjeman.